Hey yo, say hello to the bad guy Scott Hall and I've got a scoop for you. And we all know there's a lot of podcasts out there, but I encourage you to check out this one. It's called Going In Raw. You heard it here first, Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Also, of course, wherever audio podcasts can be found and taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Uh, We're going to talk about NXT today because we're really close to stand and deliver. We got some new Dusty Cup Women's Champions. I guess they're champions because they got a big cup. And yeah, they won the tournament. So the tournament champions. Yeah. They're cashing it in, but not for what you might think it would be. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. We're also going to have a bit of a debate uh, uh, spurred on by the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Uh, but first, most importantly, Big E, one of our favorites here Absolutely. at the show. Uh, provided us with a bit of an update uh, on his recovery process. After suffering a broken neck on the March 11th edition of SmackDown, he tweeted this yesterday. He said, had my first doctor's appointment and learning because of the C1 fracture, that's the one at the base of the skull there, Yeah, I narrowly escaped a stroke, paralysis, or death is very sobering. Life feels even more precious and valuable now. Yeah, that's scary. That is incredibly scary. scary. Um, absolutely. You got to think if this dude didn't have so much muscle on him, <clears throat> the outcome might have been, been a lot worse. One yeah. of those things. Yeah. Um, that, that is, that is really scary, man. And I don't know what, uh, you know, the outlook is for, uh, him going forward in the world of wrestling. But if there's even a, the smallest chance that an injury like this can be, lead to one of these things. Mm-mm, no, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't want to see that for him. He's got too much to offer. That isn't just bumping around in a ring, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that's up, you know, that's for him and his family. So exactly. Uh, exactly. Or him and his doctors or whatever. Exactly. You know, health and happiness of, of all the talent is first and foremost in our mind, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the decision. I'm sure he's going to have to make, uh, you know, at the conclusion of his recuperation process under the advisement of his doctors. Um, and we'll see, you know, if, and if, if, you know, they advise him, Hey, probably not the best idea to get back in the wrestling ring. And he chooses not to, he's, he's a man of many talents. Oh dude. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. whether it's within WWE doing something there or outside the WWE, uh, he's going to be wildly successful. Absolutely. Uh, Sammy Zayn broke character. You know, he's yeah. got a whole line of like, he's hunting for Johnny Knoxville right now. Mm-hmm. But he took. He's the time. literally in the city of Knoxville. He's right actually now. there. Yeah, um, he uh, he took a, a moment here, broke character to respond to this. He says it's a miracle just to be alive. Grateful for the chance to have this short time together, sharing the ring, sharing stories, and sharing laughs. Some heartfelt words there from Sami mm-hmm. Zayn, who uh, you know, outside of his character, seems to be an absolutely lovely and, and caring yep. and compassionate human being. That's why I'm a yep. huge fan of Sami Zayn, man. Another, another guy I would follow no matter what he did inside wrestling, outside wrestling or whatever. A thousand percent. He's terrific. Yes. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about two terrific wrestlers. Yeah, and, let's do that, man. And what one legendary wrestler apparently thinks of those two wrestlers. Mm. So uh, here's a debate that I'm sure many a wrestling fan has engaged in. Who's better? Who? Brian Danielson Mm -hmm. or AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ric Flair was posed with this very question in the latest episode of his podcast, which I believe is called Uncensored. And uh, apparently the nature boy is firmly in AJ's camp. So he's posed with this conversation. People saying Brian Danielson is better than AJ Styles. Flair says, Brian Danielson is no AJ Styles. Not even close. Brian Danielson is is very good, but he's no AJ Styles. Come on. It's a big stretch to say that he's better than AJ Styles. Wow. Going to have to disagree with the nature boy on this one. Woo. Larson says, fire me. You can't fire me. Here's the thing. Both phenomenal in-ring workers. Oh, yeah. Different styles. Oh, yeah. But both phenomenal. Phenomenal. Excellent. All timers. All timers. In my estimation, which give where Brian Danielson has the edge, character work. Mm -hmm. I feel like. 
Brian Danielson uh, uh, brings more complexity mm-hmm. to his character work. He's a better promo. Mm-hmm. Um, not to take away anything from AJ Styles and ring work. Again, AJ's an all-timer. But I feel like, at least from my perspective as a wrestling, uh, I can't say observer, as a wrestling fan and viewer, Brian, Daniels, Brian Danielson might be on my, my personal Mount Rushmore. Uh, he's an all-timer for me. I'm giving the edge to Brian Daniels. Is there a Mount Rushmore, but just like one? Like, uh, like you know, on Superman 3, like they went and they like redid, I'm sorry, Superman 2, they went and they redid Mount Rushmore to be like Zod, Nan, yeah. and Ursa. Ursa, yeah. Like if they just did that and there was one person, Danielson might be that. He might be my all-time guy. Um, I, I agree with everything you said. I think, I think I would give them, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If this was going in raw math, I would give yeah. them both tens in ring. Yeah, I would. I, I think yeah. that they're, they're even Steven. I really do. AJ is phenomenal. It's, it's not just his nickname. This dude is amazing. Brian Danielson. Phenomenal. Yep. Both got tens, that right. both tens where Danielson has them. I think is in the character stuff. You're absolutely right, man. I, I I'm just repeating what you said. You, you get him on a mic. He could be good. We've seen that. He's great at it. He could be bad. Oh my gosh. He's like the best at it. This whatever this iteration of Danielson is right now is prime. It's amazing. Um not to say AJ's not good. I think AJ's terrific. I think he's pretty solid. Um but uh but yeah, Danielson that dude. It's unfair. Now the question is, what is do you think this is Ric Flair? shooting straight or is there an agenda here with Ric Flair? What's going on here? Cause this seems a little extra. It seems a little, not even close. It's a big stretch. What yeah, is going I mean, on? I'm there? sure he, he, I mean, obviously he and AJ work together in, in TNA. Yep. Was AJ part of fortune? Man, what are you asking me this? For? <laughs> Remember who you're talking to? What here? is this? Quizzlemania? Um, I, 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 despite the fact that I own not one, but two, TNA Impact shirts. I am the first thing from an Impact expert. Uh, Fear and Loathing confirms, yes, Rick Flair is friend with AJ. I'm sure it's just a situation uh, that Rick is is friendly with AJ and wants to back up his friend. Confirmed. Fortune. All right, there you go. Give me one other guy who is in Fortune. Uh, wasn't Bob Rude in Fortune? Yeah. Who is he closest with? James Storm. That's right. And there's one other guy. Oh, really? Desmond Wolf. Desmond Wolf. Yeah, hey, you even got his TNA. He said, look <laughs> at you. You got no faith in yourself, man. I know I can bring it out of you. Um, yeah, who knows, man? I don't know. Maybe he thinks that's legit. Maybe he's like, oh, AJ's in WWE and Danielson went to AEW. So, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't. Ric Flair is just, is just Ric Flair. These days, he just sort of says shit. And it's like, okay, well, that's interesting. It, it's fun. It's fun for a debate. It's fun to, to talk about that. But. Look, man, I think both these guys are all timers. They're both great. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's just you see Danielson. I just mentioned this uh, what yesterday when we on Overrun our bonus episode. We talked about who were the early candidates for Wrestler of the Year. At this point, man, even in in late March, it's Danielson's to lose. Mm-hmm. You know, I I go back to that one look he gave when Wheeler Yuta stepped up to to Regal. You know, and Danielson steps up, and what did he have on his face? Three very distinct. Separate emotions all written on the same thing. He was impressed. He was ready to throw and he was amused all different things. And they are all conveyed on his face. This guy can do everything. It was like at first he was stepping up. He was ready to throw. And then when he realized that Yuda wasn't going to do it, that's when the amusement began. Yeah. But the entire time he was like, oh, this kid's got some moxie on him. I know. I know. It was great. Great stuff. Yeah. Danielson's tops in my books. Absolutely. Absolutely tops. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, BetterHelp. So, Larson. Yes. I'm sure you know that relationships can often take a lot of work. Many of us will drop everything and go out of our way to help someone we care about. But how often do we give ourselves that same treatment? Yeah. Several years ago, while dealing with severe anxiety, I learned firsthand how important it is to take care of the most important relationship we have in our lives, the one we have with ourselves. So I started the process of looking for a therapist. But while looking for a therapist, I also learned that it could be extremely difficult to find someone I was comfortable talking to. BetterHelp's online therapy has made that process of finding a therapist 
more convenient by offering video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Remember that you are your greatest asset. So invest as much time in yourself as you do the others in your life. Check out our sponsor, BetterHelp. And right now, Going In Raw listeners can get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash raw. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. Before we get back to the show, let's get a word from our sponsor, Lumen. Hey, Steve. Yes. Let's talk skincare. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of the friendos out there are once like me. Your skincare routine probably consisted of washing your face with the same body wash or soap you use on the rest of your body. body and you probably thought, hey, that's good enough. I've got some bad news, though. That body wash you've been using all these years is damaging your skin. Yeah, man, that's totally true. But with Lumen, you can drop that bottle of three-in-one and start using products that actually take care of your skin. Lumen's products aim to help with those stubborn acne scars, under-eye dark circles, wrinkles, sun damage, dry skin, oily skin. Getting started is absolutely easy. All you got to do is take the two-minute quiz on their website, and they'll tell you which skincare routine is best suited for your needs. Yeah, I took the quiz and got the anti-fatigue essential set to help with these dark circles I always have under my eyes. And with Lumen, I know I'm getting high-quality products made with natural ingredients like licorice root extract, rose flower oil, charcoal powder, ginger, and green tea. So level up your skincare game with Lumen Skin today. Go to lumenskin.com slash raw to get your free trial of Lumen's products. That's L-U-M-I-N skin.com slash raw to get your free trial of Lumen's products. Lumenskin.com slash raw. Uh, let's talk NXT. You know, they're setting up for stand deliver. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in, in, in typical NXT fashion. There's a lot of throwing stuff at the wall hoping something sticks. And it's funny listening to, cause we're doing a King of the ring 96 uh, going into our view this sure. week. Yeah. And so I've been a little bit by a little bit listening to uh, JR's podcast on that show. And it's interesting hearing him talk about WWE's creative process, even back in 1996 mm-hmm. where they're bringing in a bunch of people. Uh, and that's, you know, like uh, I think uh, Conrad calls it the peak of WWE's vocational gimmick era. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, and, and where you know, they had a character that was a plumber. Of mm-hmm. course, they had the goon, so a hockey enforcer, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and JR just really described it as, we're just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks, and hopefully somebody can get over. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. And, you know, Pritchard was in the building back then. Mm-hmm. He was part of creative. He's apparently overseeing, maybe in a broad sense, mm-hmm. NXT these days. Yeah. And it's just interesting to see that that sort of creative philosophy where, here, we'll just try this. We don't know yeah. if it's going to work or not, even though on paper it seems like a terrible idea. Yeah, We'll see if this works, see if someone can get this over. If not, we'll try something else. Mm-hmm. It just seems like a really haphazard approach to things. And granted, this is what NXT 2.0 now has pretty much been doing since its reset. It's been in six October. months. It's been six months and a week. It was, uh, yeah. well, the, the logo debuted, I think I, I read like mid-September. I forget, sure. that might have been in the vignette, and then they actually launched in the, in October, maybe. Um, so we're coming up, we're around the six-month mark. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot there, there, There's a lot I enjoy about NXT. The, the main thing that, you know, still sort of keeps me from really, you know, making it like must-watch or anything is exactly what you said. It's sort of like, ah, eh, how much of it doesn't really matter, you know? Like, they're, they're sort of just at the whims of main roster and, and it's not their own thing. Like they were before, you know, Mm -hmm. before you could buy into it as its own thing. Even if you didn't, even if you weren't into the idea that, Oh, once they get called up, they're going to be, you know, rebranded, which was a problem, but still like, you know, it didn't really matter to to the actual product to 1.0 because once they're gone, they're gone. And you just, you find new people to like, um, but, uh, but no, I don't know. It was, you know, it was what it was. There's stuff to like. There's stuff to be like whatever about. Um, I'll tell you something to like last night. We got to see Walter. I mean, we got to see Walter yeah, that last dude, night. That he basically caved in Duke Hudson's chest. I felt so bad for Duke. I let, Duke cracks me up, man. The, the whole bit, you know, he does play, he does play uh, sort of uh, 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 serious in the face of absurdity really well. 
We sort of saw it with Cameron Grimes, but when Dexter Loomis was doing all that wild art stuff, and then he's like, how is he doing that? He's doing it so quick, and nobody else seems to notice that it's so ludicrous, except mm-hmm. for Duke Hudson. And then he shows this awesome drawing of Gunther. And uh, and then he got his chest caved in by Gunther. Um, yeah, I, I think, dude, I'm, I'm really hoping that it bodes well for Walter. Um, I don't know how stand and deliver is going to pan out. But if Braun Breaker is going to be head of the main roster, I mean, maybe they've got such a bridge these days that Braun Breaker can win the title and still go to Raw. And then, uh, but I, I, in my head, I sort of think that if Walter might be next in line, if they're looking at him to win that NXT title, which is a possibility given sort of the last couple of weeks, it seems like they're making him into this, what he should be, you yeah. know? I mean, he he he's the surest attraction in yeah. NXT 2.0 that they have. Yeah, yeah. Because he is unlike anybody else. And they let him be himself this week, mm-hmm. and uh, and him chopping the crap out of uh, Duke Hudson. <sighs> I I could see I could see Walter being the guy to take that off Dolph as opposed to Braun Breaker at Stand and Deliver. I think that's a possibility. I don't know that I put a bunch of money on it, mm-hmm. but uh, but I could see that happening. Sure, and I think that's that that'd be terrific. That, you know, that'd get me into NXT a little bit more. But the, yeah. the way they're treating him, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I assu- I mean, I guess it's a possibility that Walter could take the title off Dolph. I have no idea what they plan on doing at, at Stan Deliver. I mean, the, you would think that the story they've been telling with Braun is that he's super inexperienced. And this is the story of him essentially learning how to be a pro wrestler. Mm-hmm, yeah. Part of that is, you know, getting suckered into that triple threat, losing the title because of it. Now defeating Dolph, who is kind of the representative right now of main roster as major leagues. Mm-hmm. Braun beats him and shows, hey, not only am I uh, on par with a main roster wrestler, so is NXT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and If that's the story they tell, they've been you know, outside of like that one year Survivor Series. They did, they've done so much more in terms of uh, establishing NXT as a third brand by doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which is you know, not even the point of NXT at this juncture. Yeah, no, I know, right? I know. Honestly, like the the entire thing about NXT is like, let's just let's just break Triple H's heart. <laughs> you know, I mean, that kind of feels like. I mean, I think it. I think I honestly do think it had more to do. We've talked about this with getting in people that Vince McMahon would prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and to do that, they just sort of like wiped the decks clean, gave it a complete rebrand, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we've got uh, so this was interesting. Uh, the Dusty Cup Women's Finals last night. Io Shirai <clears throat> and Kaylee Ray took the cup in a terrific match against mm-hmm. uh, Wendy really Chu and uh, and uh, Dakota Kai. Mm-hmm. Uh, afterwards. Uh, uh, Kaylee Ray declared that instead of cashing in their title opportunity against the tag champions, Io and Kaylee Ray inserted themselves into the uh, women's title match at Stand and Deliver. And given mm-hmm. that there's no actual GM there, uh, what Kaylee Ray says goes. <laughs> and so Mandy Rose didn't even contest it. I mean, they just started fighting. They just she she started yeah. throwing hands, but she was like, "Okay, then." <laughs> And then yeah. took some hands to them. Um, so, look, this should be a fantastic match. It should be. You know, we, we saw some people here in chat before we started, and I looked into it on Twitter, and there's some chatter, but nothing from like a, 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 a like a news outlet saying that Gigi Joel is injured. Yeah. So, don't know if she is. There's a lot of people talking about it as, as a reason why they pivoted from tag title match to... Um, the fatal four for the women's title again, just because there's Twitter chatter doesn't mean there's any injury. Gigi was part of the brawl last night. Well, white Bronny says you can also see Gigi leaving the ring quickly before the brawl. Oh, did she actually leave before the brawl? She wasn't involved in the brawl. Well, so what we're talking about here is rumor and speculation. Exactly. Um, so yeah, when I, before knowing that, you know, the match will be really good because yeah. there's a lot of really good wrestlers in it. Yeah. Same time though, I was like, "Well, this is the second time you've had this tournament, and the whole point of this is to get a tag title shot. You're not going to do tag title shot. You're kind of devaluing the tournament a little bit." Um, but you know, if the circumstances are someone's hurt, can't mm-hmm. defend the tag titles, then now I understand. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Again, no confirmation that she's actually hurt. You don't yeah, it, it'll be interesting to 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 get a, a line on this if if it actually does come out that that was the case. 
Um, I mean, at stand and deliver right now, what are we looking at? We've got the fatal four way women's match. We've got Dolph versus uh, 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 Braun. Braun. We've got, we got the LA North, Knight. LA Knight Walter. We got the North American ladder match, which is going to be great. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Uh, so that's four matches. Uh, so probably one more that we're not thinking. Of. Oh, Ciampa and, uh, and Tony D'Angelo. And we got the men's tag uh, titles. Yeah, so six. I think that's an actual match that's happening. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. So it's six. Threat, yeah. And uh, any of these takeovers, I mean, I know takeovers of old, really long matches, they're probably going to want to devote a lot of time to these matches. I mean, they're not going to, yeah. you're not going to get that women's fatal four way in in seven minutes, you know? No, I mean, like the last show they had was a takeover. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they gave all the matches time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, who knows? Maybe they have other, uh, you know, reasons for doing the women's tag titles that way. We'll find out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we'll I, find dude, out. I really like Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai as an actual tag team. Yeah. Yeah, me too. They're good. They got they've got, they've got some pieces for some other tag teams that they could really they mm-hmm. could utilize. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, let's talk about this really quick. Grayson Waller beat a kid. Yeah. It, it, given that a kid was the last guy to be in the ring there with uh, Carmelo and had had some words for him, they I didn't do the announcement for the losers match until you know they could have they could have put that off later. A kid was in there. Can we, is, a kid's got to get in this ladder match, right? Yeah, I would think so. I would think he's gonna he's gonna win that that last chance triple threat match, get in the ladder match, and you know, I mean, I would suspect Carmelo's gonna retain, and then maybe out of that, we'll get Carmelo versus a kid. A feud going forward, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder how the date went between uh, a mom and uh, Trick Williams because he indicated that he was going to take a mom out on the town. Yeah, how do you think that went, Larson? Uh, I don't know, but a kid didn't seem terribly happy to hear about about all that. No, he doesn't want a new stepdad. <laughs> he don't want a stepdad named Trick. <laughs> Uh, before we get to the recap, let's talk about one board thing. So uh, during the Creed uh, Brothers match, oh yeah, you go up on the Tron, and there is a pair of people that are absolutely trashing the Diamond Gym. Yeah. Now they, they kind of set things up for you to, to think, well, maybe MSK was involved. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. it was Imperium. Mm-hmm. Uh, Creed seemed to think it was Grizzly Young Veterans. That's why they had the match with them last night. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, it's none of those teams. It's right. somebody new. Uh, yeah. We didn't get a whole lot of clues during the the the, the vandalizing, save for you said you noticed that one of them had some fancy shoes on, right? It, it looked like there was a boot that went by. I'm gonna load this up on my on my other uh, on my news and information uh, uh, monitor oh, cool, over here. Cool, because while you do that, I'll, uh, initially I thought it was gonna be maybe they're bringing someone in for main roster, yeah, a tag team to feud with the Creeds. Um, but, uh, you know, if we're talking a, a fancy shoot, someone in the chat mentioned it earlier, possibility of Pretty Deadly yeah, moving from NXT UK, and my camera froze again, to yeah. uh, NXT 2.0. And I think that would be awesome. I think that'd be great. I think that that'd be really something else. I mean, dude, look, A-Kid sort of unexpectedly just got thrown over to 2.0. It stands to reason they are going to be pulling people from our favorite WWE promotion, NXT UK. Um and uh, and bringing them on over, pretty deadly or like a main roster. They'd perfect for 2.0. I'll be honest with you. I think they're perfect yeah. for main roster. Yeah. Um. I think they bring a lot. Uh. Let's see if I can. It was a little bit later on the show that this happened. Let's see here. We've got. Oh, that was too. That was the main event. When did this actually go down? It was. Oh, here we go. It was after the Creed Brothers match. There's the finish to that. They're celebrating. Okay, so. Here we go. What did it say? It says, don't. Okay. I'm looking at this right here. So one guy is spray painting. Don't cry. Don't cry is what they wrote. Is that is that a clue, Larson? Don't cry? Not really. <laughs> maybe somebody in chat. Maybe an enterprising detective in chat. Creed Brothers, you clearly can't find us, so we'll find you. Is what they wrote on the thing. Oh yeah, the text message thread. They there, had there's there, like yeah. a text message that says, "Until then, enjoy the view." So they're oh oh. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, no, it is a nice looking boot, some sort of fancy skinned boot, not maybe rattle skin. I don't know. 
Let's see here. But yeah, fancier boot, pretty deadly. They're pretty fancy with their attire. I think that's probably would not be shocking. Yeah, um, I would not be surprised if that is the case. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't see. Uh -oh. I mean, MSK, I mean, I think MSK, they're more partial to like Jordans and stuff, I think, right? I think so. Fred, Frederick Bedino here in chat says, Pretty Deadly's tag finish is called Don't Cry Over Spilled Milk. Hey, Frederick the Dino broke the case, man. Mystery solved here. Mystery solved. Pretty Deadly confirmed becoming to NXT 2.0. That's uh, exciting. Let's dive into the recap. Let's take a break here to get a word from our sponsor, Blenders, fresh from the sandy beaches of San Diego, California, come the only sunglasses brand I'm ever going to wear again, Steve. I'm talking about Blenders eyewear, and you're going to be just as hooked when you witness how awesome these sunglasses are. I got my pair of Ice Crush shades. They just sound cool, don't they? And they're my go-to sunglasses to wear on out my morning walks. Or running errands. Yeah, man. Blender's team of in-house designers are always coming up with new styles, too, like orange polarized wraparounds, tortoise shell frames with purple lenses to classic gold arms on black lenses. And unlike expensive big brand shades, blenders are actually affordable and still offer the same cool factor as other leading styles. And they've got more than sunglasses. Blenders off offers prescription glasses, readers, and blue lights, as well as snow collection with goggles and accessories so live life in forward motion with Blenders today. To score 15% off your Blenders purchase, visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter promo code RAWVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com code RAWVIP for 15% off. Blenders rocked with pride worldwide. Before we get back to the show, let's get a word from our sponsor, Chime. So Larson. Yeah, Steve. We may be almost a third into the new year, but that doesn't mean we can't all still make a change for the better in 2022. And what better way to make a change than by getting yourself a better checking account with no monthly fees? Yeah, fee-free 2022 sounds great, Steve. And with Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, you'll get no overdraft fees, no foreign transaction fees, no monthly fees or service fees. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime. It's fee-free for you and no cash-out fees for them. And with over 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs, including at most Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and CVS locations, you can get your money when you need it, where you need it. So make your first good decision of the new year and join over 10 million people using Chime. Sign-up takes only two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash raw. That's Chime. Dot com slash raw banking services provided by and debit card issued by the bank Corp bank or stride bank and a members FDIC get fee free transactions at any money pass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any all point or visa plus alliance ATM otherwise out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply sometimes pay anyone instant transfers can be delayed the recipient must use a valid debit card or be a shy member to claim funds so the show kicked off with trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes arriving at the performance center they get out of their car uh, Carmelo's uh, saying they got two uh, qualifier matches for the ladder match. Mellification matches. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Trick Williams is 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 laying out the bona fides of each of the people uh, vying for a spot last night. But Mello says in the end doesn't matter. They're all fighting for a spot in my ladder match. Absolutely. Uh, we kicked off with one of those matches. We had Roderick Strong versus Solo Sokoa. Heck of a match here. Mello and Trick were both on commentary. Uh, and uh, but in the end, man, Roderick Strong, this does not look good for his chances against Ilya. Well, uh, I didn't think we, I think we kind of thought his chances looked bleak. I'm just saying, you want to go into that match pretty strong. You look, I'm acting like I'm on a pre show panel right now. <laughs> this, this, yeah. this, this is not the kind of momentum you want going into an NXT UK no. title match, no, because uh, Solo Zakoa won here with a splash over Roderick Strong. Yeah, it was a fun bout, mm -hmm. physical, it totally was, yeah, physical. After that, we're backstage. Persia and Indy Hartwell are, are arguing about the TMZ article that was written about uh, the makeout session between uh, Persia and Duke, Indy and Dexter that happened last week on NXT. Mm -hmm. uh, Indy says, since basically since her name was mentioned first in that article, that she won that just like she proved that she was the better woman by defeating Persia last week. Persia says, all right, you pulled my tights. Mm. You're just jealous. Uh, of of myself and Duke index is out 
Dusha is in. That's a terrible name. It is. <laughs> that's they a took terrible Dusha, name, Persia, man. Put them together. It's bad. Yeah, so Andy awful. says Dexter is going to beat Tony D'Angelo tonight. And if you and Duke want to come watch ringside, you're invited. You are invited. After that, we had Tony D'Angelo versus Dexter Loomis. D'Angelo picks up the win here, but only because uh, there was uh, some push and pull between Persia and, uh, and Tony D over the crowbar. And uh, and he ended up grabbing it from her as the ref like was distracted, I guess, by the entire movement well, of he, everything. He ducked. The ref oh, ducked. he ducked. That's right. He ducked. Yeah. yeah. And so Tony D'Angelo ended up whacking uh, uh, Dexter Loomis with it. And, Although uh, the ref could the make here. the inference that by ducking that Dexter Loomis got hit with it. And he, therefore, yeah. there should, should have been disqualification. You would have thought, because he sort of looked up as Tony D'Angelo still had it, and then he chucked it out, if my memory serves me, which it might not. It's entirely possible. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Then after that, uh, let's see here. Tony gets on the mic. Uh, oh, Tony ends up winning. Not only did he hit him with a thing, he hits his uh, neck breaker finish, which looks a lot more crisp these days. He's eliminated like the the lead up to it. Which yeah, is it used good. to be Northern Lights lo- leading into it. You got rid of that. Yeah, but now uh, he's just not doing a, a neck breaker. It's like a combo neck breaker, perfect plex type deal. It looks cool. It's a good looking yeah. finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's got. A, he gets on the mic. He says, "Hey, Champa, I didn't come out last week to pay tribute to you. I set the hook. You took the bait. The new dawn of NXT arrives to stand and deliver." He's interrupted by Champa's music, but Champa attacks him from behind, hits him with a fairy tale ending, takes the mic. And says, uh, he says, I, you don't get to tell me when I'm done. He says, stand and deliver maybe my final chapter in NXT. And if it is, because who knows if I'm going to main roster? I don't even know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. He says, I'm going to write my own fairy tale ending. So this this presents a bit of a problem for stand and deliver, man. Because, like, how many people can Champa put over on his way out the door if he never actually leaves the door at a certain point, he's going to be like in Draco Anthony territory where, you know, he's just losing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Although Draco mm-hmm. Anthony these days doesn't actually lose. He doesn't have matches. He just gets harassed by Joe Gacy. Yeah, that was weird. That was really um, weird. So after that, we got a Dirty Dogs interview. McKenzie kind of does a segue talking about Champa leading up to this interview. And Bob Roode says, all I want to talk about Tommaso Champa. All I want to talk about is myself, glorious one, Robert Roode. Says, I think everyone's forgotten I'm a former NXT champion. I dominated this place for 12 months. Without me paving the, the way, NXT would have never reached a level of that tonight, and Braun would have never got an opportunity to become an NXT superstar. Uh, Dolph says, says Braun is two weeks away from the biggest match of his life, but tonight, Bob Rude will pummel him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he tells uh, Rude, though, leave some scraps for me. Uh, and Braun says, doesn't measure up uh, to uh, the former or the current NXT champs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we get Steve's favorite, Grayson Waller, dropping a promo. I'll take care of this, Steve, since you don't like him. Um, it's pretty much, hey, stand liver, top show of the year. I was last man standing in match against LA Knight. I'll be last man standing uh, in ladder match after I beat a kid. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, after that, we I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even see that promo. Uh, oh, really? Well, it's a good thing I took care yeah, of Yeah, I don't know why not. That's weird. Um, we had Electra Lopez versus Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley now is firmly seemingly in the faction of Briggs and Jensen because mm-hmm. she jits, she ditched like the indie worker ring gear for uh, like uh, some jean shorts and like uh, like a flannel sort of cut off top uh, that didn't help her here in her loss against Electra Lopez. Of course, this feature. <laughs> It was pretty funny when at the beginning when Briggs and Jensen were trying to hype him up, Jensen says, you're, you're a beautiful lady. <laughs> and Briggs is like, that's not going to help her. Get in yeah. there and kick some ass. You'll do great. <laughs> yeah. You're a beautiful lady. <laughs> Anyways, during the match, Briggs and Jensen, so Legato comes over as Electra Lopez has uh, 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 Fallon up against the ropes, and they start taunting her. Briggs and Jensen comes over. They start brawling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fallon starts to come back, hits a running bulldog. Gets a two with that, but Lopez hits that blue thunder bomb finish mm-hmm. for the win there. Yeah. Uh, next, we get Draco Anthony in the locker room. His phone rings. He looks at it, throws it in the locker. Oh, yeah. It's not, can't do that. So Zion Quinn walks in. Phone rings again. Again, Draco looks at it, throws it in the locker. And so Quinn asks, is that Joe Gacy? And Draco says, yeah, he's been blowing me up all week. And he shows him a video <laughs> that apparently Joe Gacy sent yeah. of him saying, hey, you don't have to live this life all alone. Uh, it goes on a little bit. Draco then, after that video is over, 
doesn't just throw his phone into the locker. He throws it across the room at a locker. I think the subtext here is clear. He's got an Android, tired of being a big dummy, looking for any way to get rid of it so he can upgrade to an iPhone. I think for that to be true, he'd need to have insurance on that phone. Though. I'm sure he does. Well, I mean, I'm not going to make that assumption. Oh, I make that assumption. <laughs> I'm not going to make that assumption. <laughs> not everybody gets the insurance on their phones, Steve. So anyways, uh, Zion tells them, you know what you have to do. And Draco says, yeah, get a gun. handle my business like a man. <laughs> get a gun. And Get a duffel Zion. bag with knives in it, like the Undertaker on that Apparently. true interview. And Zion says, well, I have your back. Yeah, that's nice, Zion. Uh, after that, we had a Dakota Kai Wendy Chu interview. Uh, Wendy says, last year, Dakota went into the finals with her best friend, and she won it. This year, she's going to win it with her new best friend. She says, we're at the same level that Kai and Raquel were at last year, except Kai kicked Raquel in the face. And then uh, Raquel power bomb, uh, Chigona bombed her. And uh, now they totally despise each other. And Kai's like, okay, yeah. She's like, you've had too much orange soda today. She says, I don't know if uh, uh, if we, me and Wendy would have worked out, would work out. But tonight, uh, I'm going to put my name on that trophy a second time. Io and Kaylee Ray are great, but tonight is our night. Yep. Uh, then we get Bob Rude versus Braun Breaker. We get that glorious oh, entrance. Man, it was awesome. The, the spinning pedestal. The pose, it's the terrific. music, the, the robe, music, all the of that. The guitar shit. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, so good. I want Missed that. Done. I want Missed that so much. It'd be, it'd be great if his character uh, upon his call-up wasn't just theme song oh, or the concept sad. of being glorious. That's yeah. all it was. Boy, that was that was disappointing. Anyway, it really was. fun, man. Robert this was a good match. Like, he was having all sorts of fun, man. Uh, in the end, though, uh, uh, Rude comes off the second rope, and he lands right into bronze finish. And yeah. uh, and Braun gets the win here. We did get to see a Frankensteiner, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and we did get to see a glorious DDT. And we saw a glorious DDT. It's just he was too beat up to make that cover immediately. He was good mm -hmm. on protecting his finish uh, and took a little time to get the cover. Braun kicked out of that, uh, so that was a big deal. Uh, but, yeah, in the end, Braun got the win here. Uh, and as he went up the ramp, his face was to the crowd, inexperience, and uh, Dolph sneaks up from behind him. Bang! Super kick to the face. Yep. Uh, then we get Indy and Persia or Indy and Dexter backstage. Dexter's ice in his head. Uh, Persia and Duke walk in, <clears throat> and then Indy asks Persia, "Hey, did you let go of the crowbar on purpose?" Mm. And Persia says, "Of course not. Tony ripped it out of my hand. Stop making excuses why your man lost. Duke would never make excuses like that. My man gets the job done inside and outside the ring." And Duke's like, "Yeah, that's right." So Indy asks Persia. Uh, if she knows that her boyfriend is Duke and not John Cena, Persia says, yeah, and Duke could beat him or any other man on the roster. And Indy goes, is that so? And so Dexter walks behind his easel. He's got a pad of paper there. He starts just furiously drawing. His arms are going, and like half the time his hand's not even on the, you know, connecting yeah, with the canvas here. furiously doing something. Yeah. And so uh, Indy says, well, yeah, can Duke beat? Dun dun dun, Gunther. It's a really Walter. good drawing Walter. of Gunther. It's too. a really good drawing of Walter. Yeah, it's a really good drawing. Uh, real quick here, Cultaholic rated us with a party of sixty-five. What's up, thank fellas? You so much. Thank you. Thank you. What's thank up? You. Hopefully, you guys had a good stream over there. Um, yeah, I, the Duke Duke was cracking me up during this whole thing. He was just confused. He's like, "What is this?" Uh, also, Duke has failed inside and outside the ring, Larson. He loses a lot, and he's a failed poker room guy. Yeah, like, we've he's, seen yeah, he, that already. He's faced a lot of failure. So uh, Persia says, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, Duke can beat Walter. This next part cracked me up, man. I love these Chase University video packages. It seems like Chase, Andre Chase, is creating some monsters in his image. In this case, his number one guy, Bodie. He's presenting an essay on what an essay, an oral essay on what fortitude means to him. He's talking about his essay, and he's pointing out uh, all that Von Wagner has done, challenging Chase U's fortitude, his own fortitude. He says, he gave me that nasty black eye. I really wish they would have run with that for a couple weeks. The black eye saga was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. He says, but I never missed a class. And then some guy in the front raises his hand, and Bodie's, he, Bodie yells at him. He rips into him. He's like, how could you interrupt me? And uh, Chase says, man, Bodie, where does that anger come from? Calm down. He says, who taught you how to speak that way? And Bodie says, you did, Chase. You did. And Andre stops and pauses and reflects, and he says, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And then he yells at the guy too. Says, "Shut the fuck up!" 
<laughs> and then Bodie says he's going to beat Von Wagner next week. We get to see Von Wagner a little bit, but first we have Grayson Walla versus A Kid. Yeah. Jobbing out A Kid. Yeah. Second pretty, match. It, pretty quickly, too. It was not a long match. Yeah, man. It was a pretty quick match. I mean, yeah. it was a good match while it lasted, but it was pretty quick. Yeah, no, it was fine. But A Kid needs better. Tra- you could just see the writing on the wall for A Kid, man. Yeah. He's just, he's the, the cruiserweight. They don't have a cruiserweight title anymore. They don't have a cruiserweight title anymore. I I, I don't know what they're going to do with him, man. I don't know, I don't maybe know teach him how to do an Irish accent. He can be another guy with Butch and Ridge hanging out at the pubs back in the days of old. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. I guess so. Or so Matador. Uh, after that, after the loss, Mello grabs the mic and says, oh, I just realized we're missing one man from the ladder match. So next week, three losers of their matches will take part in a last chance triple threat bout. So it's going to be Grimes versus Strong versus A-Kid. And then Mello t- tells A-Kid, you may be A-Kid, but you'll never be the A-Champ. Mm-hmm. And that's what Trick says tonight. I'm taking out A-Mama. <laughs> A-Kid did not like that very much. Nope. Keep an open mind, man. Maybe Trick would make for a good stepdad. You never know. Uh, after that, uh, we've got Robert Stone, who, by the way, is dressed to the nines. Yeah. He, he looks, always is, though. He, oh, no, he always looks spectacular. But then you look at that sack of crap Von Wagner – He's got like the like the most off the rack, two sizes too big clown suit on. I know. His hair looks like he hasn't washed it in a couple weeks. Oh, he looks a mess. Like if you're gonna do this with Von Wagner, clean up a little bit, man. I know. Maybe it's a process, you know? Maybe it's it's a process. process that seems to be getting worse. I feel like the first week he was in a suit, he looked better than he did last night. Yeah. Maybe on the that developmental money, he can only really afford one tailored suit. You know, everything else has to be off the rack. It's like the time Marge had that one dress. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Yvonne, then it's like kind of shoves the, the the tablet aside and says, hey, one thing at a time, Bodie Miller next week. Not Bodie Miller, Bodie Hayward. Mm-hmm. Bodie Miller was a skier, I think. I think so, yeah. Uh, and then they move on. And so there's uh, when, uh, so Robert Stone was showing footage of Jack at time interrupting him talking to yeah. Uh, I would presume a uh, performance center uh, uh, athlete. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it turns out I, I saw because they, they tweeted that bit out mm-hmm. and tagged Sophia Cromwell. Ah, okay. So I think that's who this is. She walks in yeah. and asks Stone, hey, you have time to talk now to continue our conversation? He goes, yes. They step away. Yeah. He's like, wait, where are you going, Robert? I want to hear this conversation. Yeah. Robert, I'm not wearing underwear. I forgot. I forgot where I put them, Robert. Okay. I couldn't afford underwear. I spent all my money on my one tailored suit. I spent all my money on this one suit. Do you have some quarters for the laundromat? <laughs> laundromat. It's like you're not supposed to wash. <laughs> like put suits in the wash. You get dry clean. <laughs> What's that? I put it in the sun. Does that cost two fifty? Like the laundry? <laughs> do I just put the do I put the quarters in the dryer instead of the washer? Mm-hmm. Are they clean that way at the laundromat? Uh, then they'll be dry. <laughs> and after that, we had the Creed Brothers versus Grizzled Young Veterans. We have a Zach Gibson promo to kick it off. He says, why are you so angry? He says, I understand you got jumped and you think it was us, but do you really trust those beef jerky ears? <laughs> he says, we didn't jump you from behind, because if they did, it'll be, in, meaning we're, we'll get you straight on, and then they just attack. They just attack them from, a, from the yeah. front, yeah. yeah. Totally. It didn't matter, totally. though. They lost. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Uh, so uh, the Creeds get the win here. Uh, James Drake took the loss. He gets hit with a, a slam, sliding clothesline from Brutus. And on the Tron, we see two individuals vandalizing, mm-hmm. as he talked to begin the show, Diamond Mines Jim, and while they're texting him. And, yeah, it seems pretty, pretty clear that it's going to be pretty deadly. Uh, that don't cry. That was a clue. And yep. then our chat figured it out. Bunch of smart people here in our chat, or at least one named Frederick the Dino. Yeah. Uh, then we had a uh, uh, Valter versus oh. Duke Hudson. Oh, shit. That first chop. Oh my gosh! So loud. All of them. All so of them. loud. Yeah. Actually, I think the second one was the loudest in my estimation. Hold the one. Maybe I'm thinking. The, maybe the, I'm thinking. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Because the so third, then the second or third one was kind of dull. So maybe second, you're thinking of the second one. The second one. The second and third ones were back to back. Okay. And the second one, I think, was the one where the, the crowd started chanting. 
Yeah. And Duke's chest just immediately got all bright oh, red. Man. And yeah. Skin got busted up. That was rough. Holy shit. That and, was amazing. And Duke sold it like crazy. Get chopped to the mat. I don't know if he had much choice, honestly. I think that's, you, you get, think that's a shoot, huh? To a degree. I mean, collapse. he bumps. He'll bump, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know how much you can really sell that. You get chopped by Walter. You just, that's natural reaction, I guess. So, anyways, uh, finish sees Walter hits a pair of huge chops, a boot, and a power bomb to get the win. Sadly, Walter, he did not do the full, full weight. Yeah, full body. It's the only on thing video. missing. It's the only thing missing from this match. So anyways, Walter grabs the mic, calls himself the most dominant competitor in NXT, but I'm still being overlooked as a disgrace as someone like L.A. Knight. Yeah. He himself, and he gets interrupted by, yeah, yeah, L.A. Knight. He comes to the ring. He says, let me talk to you. And Walter tells him to shut up. You represent everything that is wrong with this sport today. Lots of talking, very little skill. You can talk yourself in the title matches, but you don't have what it takes to win them. I mean, Walter's got a point. Yeah. Oh, you got a point here. Knight tells Walter. He says, listen, yeah, if you interrupt me one more time, I'll knock your block head off your dad body. Hey, man, that dude worked so hard to get that dad bod, okay? I think Walter's done a great job. He's goals yeah. to me, man. Heck yeah. Anyways, he says, uh, he says, I was going to use my words to set up a match. But since Walter doesn't like me using my words, I'll use a different route. He says, and then he attacks Walter. And then Imperium beats up LA Knight. MSK run out to make the save. And they clear Imperium from the ring. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we got Cameron Grimes this promo. This was so depressing. It really was. <laughs> this was so depressing. Zero energy Cameron Grimes. I, I mean, it, any semblance of the man that was is gone. I know. Just I know. gone. So he says, everyone knows I wear my heart on my sleeve. Last week, I was frustrated in my emotion and emotional. He says, my father was my hero, my best friend. He lived and breathed this business so much that I was in the ring when I was in diapers. He talks about how his father passed away shortly after he signed with NXT. And he says, that's why next week is the biggest match of my career. A chance to get that final spot in the ladder match. Fulfill the promise I made to my father. Next week, I'll do whatever it takes to get the win. Yep. And then we had our main event, Wendy Chu and Dakota Kai versus Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray. There was some fun stuff here. I like Wendy Chu's little comedy gimmicks here, mm -hmm. using the pillow to block the 619. That was great. That was really that was great. cool, yeah. That was good stuff. But in the end, uh, I believe it was a moonsault from mm -hmm. Io Shirai that put away Wendy Chu uh, to get the win here. New Dusty Rhodes Classic uh, Champions, Tournament Champions. So, yep. Cool. And them. then, uh, yeah, afterwards, uh, Confetti's fallen. Toxic Attraction gets in the ring. Mandy says, cut the music. Champ has something to say. First of all, congratulations for winning the Dusty Cup. He sa She says, even though Wendy and Dakota blew it, but if EO and Kaylee Ray think they're going to beat Gigi and Jace to become tag titles, they're sadly mistaken. And so Kaylee Ray says, we agree with you, Mandy. We got into the Dusty Cup uh, it, with the goal of destroying Toxic Attraction. The best way to do that is to go after the leader and take what's most important, most important to her. Uh, EO says that Mandy said that she'd fight anyone for the title. And so Kaylee Ray says uh, they think they're going to cash in their opportunity from winning the Dusty Cup and make the women's title match a fatal four-way. And then Gigi's got a, a glass of champagne, throws it in the, in the face of Kaylee Ray. Huge brawl breaks out. Cora Jade joins in. And then her and EO and Kaylee Ray clear the ring to close mm -hmm. the show. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. I've got a thread over here on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. Great way to support the show. We got all sorts of bonus content. And if you can't Indeed. make the show live, you can leave a question on our question thread. Uh, Wolfpack for Life wants to know if we have heard anything about Elias because he thinks he'd make a good addition to 2.0. Um, Feifel select the uh, last week. Ago. Oh, last yeah. week, last week or two weeks ago. I think it was just last week. Um, had a, a, a write up about Elias. Um, recommend checking that out if 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 you're curious about that. And just like in general, Feifel select is great. Well, did they say anything that was like pertinent to? I, don't, I mean, I, 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 don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the last thing I remember hearing was like, I think it's just creatively they have nothing for him. Yeah, like they basically metaphorically, I guess, killed him off, or he his his character killed his gimmick off in those mm -hmm. vignettes, and then uh, like they were going to. There's like pieces to the puzzle. 
they were going to debut they they were they had ideas for him and then apparently when Vince or Bruce or whoever saw his get up he, they were like it looks like macho man we're not going to yeah. do that yeah and then you his render in like 2K22 or something yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, there was like a roster shot of him, and, and he was wearing like trunks, macho, macho man type stuff. It is kind of like, yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I would speculate that they just don't have anything for him right now. Yeah, that'd be my guess too. Uh, Ears of Justice with the sub, thank you so much. Uh, Nikhil says, "How would you sort out the pacing issues on WWE TV? All their shows have too many recaps. I would lessen the amount of recaps. Fewer recaps. Yeah, that's I the mean, answer. Honestly, like." Uh, when I look at sometimes AEW Dynamite even runs at too fast a pace, uh, but I think if you want to fit everything in and keep the momentum going, then that's what you got to do. You just you just go from one to boom, boom, boom to the mm-hmm. next and the next and the next, and then let people breathe during the matches. And you have that's why yeah. you have longer matches, and then yeah. the finishes to those matches are really exciting because they you know they're longer matches. They built they built the match, yeah, mm-hmm. built the finish. Yeah. I mean, uh, Cornbread Haas here says they're a match at Stand Deliver that makes it must watch. Uh, who's ma- who's match? No, is there a match? Oh, is there a match at Stand Deliver that's must watch? Yeah, it's Walter versus. Uh, L.A. Night. Yeah. See all these chops unless Walter's going to lose, which I don't think he's going to. No, I doubt. I don't think he's going to lose. The one thing the one thing that the one thing that you you want in a company is a guy who's really over who could lose a lot. And that's kind of L.A. Knight. Like yeah. that dude loses all the time. And it doesn't really matter. Really he's super over. over. He's, he's really over. Exactly. That's something else. J.R. talks about the King of the Ring 96. Mm-hmm. But people lobbying not to lose. And it says if you're. If if you're if if you are that concerned about losing, you must not be over enough to to get wins. Essentially, that was kind of that was one of the points that I was thinking about after the fact when you and I were having the spirited discussion about Eddie Kingston. Is that that's a guy who like is is one of those things that as a promoter, wouldn't you really want that a guy who can just lose 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 and still be wildly over with the crowd? Uh, in his case, though, he got that win. Well, I mean, I, I understand that, but part of the story they were setting up with Eddie is. Going even going back to his match because Brian Danielson is uh, Eddie's not good enough to win, right? But so if a story is not good enough to win, then to to come to the logical conclusion of that story, he has to win a match of importance. Otherwise, there's no arc there. But again, you don't really need that if you're going to be over regardless, unless you're telling a story about that. Then you kind of need him to win. Uh, Dave Matuszek says, considering that LA Knight and Gunther will face off against each other next Saturday, do you ever feel conflicted as to whom to root for if you like them both? If Walter's in a match, I root for him. <laughs> but let's say there's two guys. If it was Walter and Brian Danielson, then yes. Then I'm just rooting for good wrestling. Which is a guarantee if you got Walter and Brian Danielson. So here's where I stand on that. Whoever needs the win more... Like Walter would need that win more than Danielson because Danielson's done it all. Walter still is like one loss away from being released, which might actually be better because then he'd just show up in AEW and he'd probably be used better. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I go for whoever I think needs the win more. That's a good outlook. Yeah. Uh, dang MQ. If Seth Rollins show up in NXT 2.0, should he wear. <laughs> Suit that matches the colors of NXT 2.0. Absolutely. If who? Seth? Yeah. Yeah. So all the colors. It's, it's like a Jackson it's, Pollock. Yeah, thing. it'd be a Jackson Pollock thing. Which I think he's worn stuff like that before. Yeah, he has. He has. It should Not just be bad. like a translucent right. well, or an iridescent. Cool. Sorry, an iridescent. iridescent yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Golden Gunther asks, why aren't EO and to some extent Kyrie Sane Treated better or at least given more of the Oscar treatment, given that they're considered to be some of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time. Because they don't really care about how good of a wrestler you are. They care about the what you bring as an attraction. I mean, EO has won basically everything there is to win in NXT. And you can't really... Yeah, I mean, how much better can she be treated? You know, she has literally won like everything except for like, I guess, the tag titles, huh? No, she won the tag titles with Zoe Stark. Holy shit, you're right. Yeah. She's yeah, she's done everything, man. Yeah. Uh White Brownie with the way this fatal four way match was set up, is it possible that both Kaylee Ray and EO are getting called up for Raw SmackDown after Mania? Better chance EO is getting called up than than Kaylee Ray, because Kaylee Ray just got there. 
You know, dude, with call ups, I'll believe it when I see it. Like, yeah, I, totally. I have no idea. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like these days a bigger indicator is like if they have a match on main event, or if they ha- if they're on Raw, like Grayson mm-hmm. Waller. I could see him getting called up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Cameron asks, going in Raw is allowed a final say. In all WWE creative for a year, but one of you has to get your chest beat to hamburger meat by Gunther. Okay. I'd rather just have a paycheck. <laughs> Look, I'm not so I'm I'm not gonna get beat up just so I can have final say on WWE. That's their job, not my job. I mean, if you took this take a couple chops for Walter and you get veto power, that's tempting. You have to answer emails, probably take meetings at two o'clock in the morning. No, but if you have final say on all that, guess what? Nine to five job. <laughs> uh, all right, you can take the chops. I'll take the chops. You can take the chops. Veto power? Yeah. Uh, and I'll get some of that veto power. Uh, Darius the Great says, when looking at NXT 1.0 and 2.0, what may, who by the end of the year, who would be champion? What, a main roster or an NXT? Raw and SmackDown. Walter. What about on SmackDown? I gave my answer, Steve. (laughs) See, look at that, dude. I just throw it to you and you hit it out of the park. (laughs) Uh, Darius says, when looking at NXT 1.0 and 2.0, what media property and its reboot sequel is it most like? He says, for example, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Right. That would not work because World is a sequel to Park. They sort of retcon out two and three, I think. but, But Jurassic World is like a sequel to Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't work. This is more like RoboCop one and two, isn't it? It's more like RoboCop I mean, one and two, and then three being the sequel that two point is. Sorry. Yeah, I meant I meant one, and then the reboot one. It oh, wasn't, gotcha. it's not strictly a reboot though, because there's people left over. There's an answer to this question. What the fuck is it? Something that was basically. Re- oh, you know what it is? It's Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad. Oh yeah. Because like they just got rid of everything that they didn't want to get rid of in Suicide Squad for the new for the Suicide Squad, yeah, and then kept some stuff that they liked in that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane's birthday tweet would L.A. Knight work on main roster, even though he, even though basically he could be seen as a face version of the Miz. Yeah, he's a good character. He's a great promo. Oh, I don't think he's in it. I don't see much about the Miz there. I think he'd be fine on main roster. He might yeah. actually have more success on main roster. He has an NXT. Yeah. Yeah. That's not like he's he necessarily being gotten with the push. crowd, man. He, he has gotten himself crowd. over. He connects. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Mayor Planet Houston, we were talking about seeing NXT alum come back to NXT, book an NXT reun- class reunion. Well, the problem is a lot of people that probably could come back aren't uh, don't work for WWE anymore. Yeah. It's like what? Shinsuke? Kevin Owens, Finn, Sammy. Yeah. Horsewoman. Horsewoman. It's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, interesting. Julio says, hey, friendos, don't have a 2.0 question, but I did just finish listening to the Raw review, and when you guys were talking about the recaps, I thought about something. Hmm. Do people still flip through channels? He says, I can't remember the last time I flipped through channels because everything has a guide now, and I can't think of a TV service where there isn't a guide. That's a fair point. I don't flip through channels per se, but I do scroll through the guide. So that's a fair point. I think it's exclusively a scrolling through the guide thing. Yeah. But does Vince think that way? <laughs> does he think many people still do flip through the channels? Literally? Does he know how that shit works in the living room? Like, does he give any thought to it? I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just asking the question out loud. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure he understands. I, th- I think he knows that change the channel is sort of just a archaic thing now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a way of saying they can turn their attention elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, Hartman asks, where does Gorillas of Destiny go now that they aren't in Bullet Club anymore? I saw that they were they had something with uh, Taguchi and Master Wado the other day. I saw still of that. Mm-hmm. But then also uh, uh, Tanahashi was involved in something as well. Well, New Japan does a lot of stuff with like their legends. Like they put them off oftentimes in uh, like the first round of the New Japan Cup for them to get eliminated quickly. They'll put them in uh, Rambos uh, for them to get eliminated. So I think Gorillas of Destiny, Legends at this point, 
head straight to the Yuji Nagatas of the world, to uh, the Tenzins, Tenzans, Tenzans, yes, Kojima, yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're sort of in there with them, don't you think? No, yeah. I mean, they were just tag champs not long ago, so yeah. But you know, that's done with. They're not even put them in House of Torture as different characters. Oh wow. I don't wow. know. I don't know, man. Uh, Dark Dank Lucha says, are y'all going to check out the Republic of Lucha year one show tonight on Fight? He says, I think it's on either before or after Dynamite tonight. Dynamite's on. I got to watch that. No. Hard Sorry. no. No, absolutely not. You saw it. You're going to watch it for us, Dark Dank Lucha. So I mean, just he, when, when we see, he, when you, we see you chat again. He was there. Oh, was this the thing that he went to? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, no, I saw a bunch of his videos yeah. that he recorded. That's good enough for me. Or he can just, you know, break it down for us here in chat in like one relatively lengthy highlighted message. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That works. Yeah. That's good. Anyways. Good. Uh, oh, wow. Raw's Cody has a really cool question. How would going in Raw be different if you two were in your 20s? I don't even know what being in your 20s is like anymore. I have no concept of that whatsoever. We wouldn't maintain like a real schedule. No, like it would be. No, if we were on bosses, could make a living doing this. We would. It would just be so haphazard. Yeah, we would. Not, wouldn't do anything before three p.m. Pacific. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just be sleeping in. There'd be a lot of hungover podcasts. There would be. Yeah, absolutely. There would be. <laughs> Going there would in be. Fortnite. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, oh wait, what is this? Maggie says, "Can I put in a raid request for the man turn?" He made a create a wrestler named Maggie Rosa, and honestly, I'll never be that cool. But she looks amazing. Yes, we'll raid the man turn. We uh, will. The God saw sub to twenty months. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate. It. Till next time, talk to you later. Bye.